Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Unreal Engine 5.5 is finally here. Now I say finally and that's kind of just a thing to say because truth of the matter is this was first announced back in October the 1st so it's only been about five weeks since that happened. But yep, Unreal Engine 5.5 is here and there's something very important I need to point out to you about this particular release. Now none of this is actually news per se because uh, I covered it on the channel in the past but when you go ahead to go and update 5.5 you're going to immediately notice this. There is an update in the way that pricing works for Unreal Engine 5, um, and this is all down to a new EULA you're going to have to agree to. Now, most of this has stayed the same. If you make less than a million dollars, uh, you get one million in uh, gross revenue before you have to start uh, paying them royalties. Uh, this applies in a number of different business cases. Now, the big part that has changed is right here, seat-based fees. So for uses of Unreal Engine for any other commercial purposes, you are required to purchase one seat per year per user. So that's probably mostly coming down to people using this for film visualization and that kind of stuff. Now that is taking effect with Unreal Engine 5.5. By the way, to go along with that, so if you agree to their pricing terms like this, there is also a new EULA. Now, of course, you're going to go through this with a fine tooth comb, of course, right? You're going to not just uh, skip through all of it like this, get to the bottom and say, oh yeah, I agree, let's go, uh, before you can go ahead and download. I promise none of you are going to do that, right? Anyways, this was the version where the new pricing took effect. Now, one of the big things about the 5.5 preview that wowed the most was this brand new Mega Lights. Now, the idea behind Mega Lights is pretty simple. They gave you the ability to just stop thinking about lighting budgets. It enables artists to place an order of magnitudes more dynamic and shadowed area lights than they ever could before. You can even actually place, um, this was an animated video giving off light. It also supports volumetric fog. Uh, so Mega Lights is is kind of like this new uh, it just works lumen technology for lighting that makes you have uh, almost as many like I guess it's more like nanite it gives you the ability to stop thinking about lighting totals like nanite in theory gave you the ability to stop thinking about polygon counts now the reality of it is from what I've heard that's not necessarily the case uh, with mega lights there are definitely some performance ramifications uh, I haven't gone into them with any detail so I've just seen other people responding to them but basically it is a new lighting system and setup that basically unhinders you from the number of lights you can use in your scene. But that was just kind of the marquee feature from when uh, the uh, Unreal Engine 5.5 was first announced. There is a bunch more to this release. We'll go through the quick updates. They do have a highlights video, uh, but they've done a number of improvements on animation. One of the things they're doing with Unreal Engine actually is moving more and more animation tooling and functionality into the engine itself. So eventually you're not going to have to go to uh, Max Meyer or Blender or where ever to do your animation tools, you should be able to do them directly inside. They also did a number of updates to their sequencer, their nonlinear animation editor, so you've got more control over the user interface itself. They also added non-destructive animation layers, providing the additional control and flexibility previously only found in traditional DCC applications. This includes the ability to an, um, easily manage the contents, choose between additive or override, and animate the weights of these layers. So you can see the new animation system in action and the uh, new capabilities that you have for animating there as well. So a lot of love on the animation side. And that's just kind of the beginning. Uh, we've also got easier to set up uh, different dynamics uh, scenarios to be triggered interactively, such as conditional state changes based on player choices during interactive cinematics, custom bindings for more nuanced control of objects. Within gameplay cinematics, you can also um, warp a sequence's timing using a curve, reposition the origin of a subsequence or shot. And we also got animation deformers. These are actually really cool. You're going to see this in action right here. So this is going to open up a whole world of opportunity for the kind of things that you can animate. So you can basically um, animate organically any kind of shape you wish using these new uh, deformers. That's pretty awesome stuff there right there. Uh, there's also an animator kit plugin. Contains a collection of ready-made control rigs with built-in deformers, including lattice, camera lattice, and sculpt. Again, it's moving you more and more out of your content creation tools and into Unreal Engine, where you can sort of do everything there. Uh, they also have the control, um, the addition of modular control rig um, moves to beta. Now, one of the things to understand with the way that Unreal Engine works, something is experimental, and then it is considered beta, 
and then it is considered production ready. So that's basically the stage that things develop. So if something that is beta is generally going to make it into the finished project, where something that's experimental, it's an experiment. It may not work out that way. Uh, so modular control rigs has many UI and UX improvements, new quadruped and vehicle modules, support for common bipedal skeletal types, while skeletal editor is now production ready. So like I said, you've got experimental, beta, production ready. Production ready is exactly what it says on the tin. This means you can start using it in your commercial game. Uh, with improvements that includes quicker and simpler workflows for painting and editing weights. We also have improvements to the MetaHuman animator. Uh, so part of the MetaHuman plugin for Unreal Engine, animator now receives a significant upgrade in this release. Uh, this was introduced as an experimental feature. It is now possible to uh, generate high quality facial animations, include inference from upper face gestures from just audio performances. So you can actually have audio uh, driving the animation for you. That's actually pretty impressive. Another thing that's really impressive, a new feature here, and I don't know if this one's experimental or beta. This one might be experimental, but we now have mutable char character customization. So when you want to start doing dynamic characters at runtime, this system takes care of it for you. So the system can be used to generate dynamic skeletal meshes, materials and textures for characters, animals, props, weapons, and more, optimizing memory usage, keeping shader costs low, and reducing the draw call count. Unlike native tools for modifying content at runtime. Mutable supports deep customization that involves many parameters and texture layers, complex mesh interactions, and texture effects that are not GPU friendly. Uh, you can explore mutable features in the corresponding samples project. So there is a sample for this that will be coming out in a couple of days. So this is for doing things like layering outfits or helmets on characters, different weapons, all using this new mutable system. Pretty impressive stuff there. Uh, choosers are now considered production ready. It's offering a framework for selecting animations for playback based on game context without having to write complex logic. This robust game context asset selector can now be used to select nearly any type of asset. This encompasses a multiple levels of complexity from simple random selectors to database driven logic, uh, including thousands of animators. So they updated the game animation sample project to show that uh, on the uh, rendering side of things, Lumen can now run at 60 Hertz on platforms where there is hardware support. Uh, so this is thanks to underlying improvements to the ray tracing, also the capabilities of path tracing and light baking. On the path tracing side, DXR accelerated physically accurate progressive rendering mode is now production ready. So you can now use production ready. Uh, you can now use uh, path tracing in your game and consider you know, ready for prime time, offering uncompromised quality uh, for crafting, uh, for creating final pixels for nonlinear animations or full featured ground truth reference images. This release sees a series of performance and fidelity improvements, Linux support, support for all other production ready features, including sky atmosphere and volumetric clouds. Substrate, that was like the new um, material system for doing things like paints. Uh, was introduced in 5.2. It is now considered beta. All features of legacy legacy materials are now supported. Uh, so and fully ready for linear material production. So if you're doing things again, like car paints, uh, there's just more controls or exposed in how these actual textures work for you. Uh, movie render graph uh, also moves into beta with this release. Uh, in addition, all asset types are now fully supported in the render graph, including render layers, features including translucent objects, Niagara effects, heterogeneous volumes, landscapes, sky, atmosphere, and so on. So if you're using this for film production, obviously more improvements on that level. We did see earlier a little bit about uh, mega lights. They're dubbing it the nanite of lights. Basically it gives you the ability to use a stupid amount of lights in your scene. Um, uh, you have hundreds of dynamic shadow casting lights without constraints. Uh, so theoretically, it should make your lighting process simpler. And then on the um, virtual production side, so if you're using it for film, a number of different improvements there as well. Uh, as you see the details of them right there. And mobile game development, we've got uh, some improvements on the rendering. So forward renderer saw a slew of features that will increase visual fidelity on the platform. It now supports debuffer de decals, uh, rectangular area lights, capsule shadows, uh, movable IES textures for point and spotlights, volumetric fog, Niagara particle lights, screen space reflections now work on both mobile forward and deferred render and probably the coolest new feature is actually this one right here mobile previewer uh, so it gives you the ability to see how your game will run on various different devices and now there's support for a number of different android profiles uh, the ability to uh, emulate half precision 16 point shaders and so on so you get an idea of how your game will preview on the mobile device you might be targeting um 
some improvements to the, the build side of things as well. And then Fab is now integrated. This actually happened a little while ago. So when Fab launched, it did not have uh, Unreal Engine integration in it. Unreal Engine 5.4 plugin for Fab is now available and it is integrated directly into 5.5. Fab, of course, being the replacement for the Unreal Engine Marketplace, as well as Quixel, Sketchfab, etc. So uh, that is kind of the top level highlights. But if you want to go into the release notes, which is way beyond what I'm going to cover today, you're going to find a ton more detail on everything that we just saw here. Again, one of the new areas, okay, so I know for sure now it's beta, not experimental. This uh, mutable customizable character thing uh, is going to give you the ability to create those dynamic um, uh, dressed and, and adorned and equipped characters. Uh, and it's a system that handles all this stuff for you. Things like handling the Z fighting for you. So the jackets over the shirt, over the mesh, that kind of thing. And all of the stuff and functionality is built in for you. So there is a ton more to this particular release. Again, I love this one the new animation deformers. They just look so cool. Uh, but yeah, that is kind of the high level of it. There's going to be a ton more here in these release notes. There is a lot in this release. Uh, again, the highlight feature would be those new mega lights, uh, but there is so much more here uh, than what I'm going to cover today. So if you want, check out the full release notes available in the link down below. As you can see, we're, we're still going and going and going and going and going. I gotta admit, it always kind of blows my mind how much Unreal Engine managed to pack into each release. I think they're kind of in a league of their own in this regard, but I'm curious, do you think the same thing? All right, ladies and gentlemen, Unreal Engine 5.5. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.